love to this monstrosity of a project definitely top three projects for us and it kind of rings the bell in our mind we want to talk today about how we've managed to climb the hardscape ladder we're definitely not at the top of the top but we've come a little bit ways and there's a few things that have kind of got us there so let's get into it so we're out here we got nathan your owner he's in the truck right now digging out his chicken and rice um, we're finishing up putting some final touches we're gonna be down here a few more times we got railings and glass to do so we're gonna see how many railings we can get in today this project's like strictly hardscape all hardscape the most landscape we have right there is those lilac boulders those boulders that were shipped in from out west kind of like the end of this driveway the permeable paver driveway this is beautiful like black block black poly sand got this wall lining the whole property the paver deck is made out of marble we've got this large upper deck here which we are going to be putting glass you can see all these posts and all these rails that are set up there's a lower deck two staircases six foot staircase four foot staircase going down to the dock um, drainage on everything of course a new backyard and just some tall walls. I think our excavation on that wall was like 13 foot, seven inches, which is wicked. That day we were standing out here and there was just a cliff out their back door. But yeah, that's kind of just what we got going on. Yeah. Because if I if we leave that gap, if we went here, there's this room here. Okay. You could stick your hand through. Yeah. Which, you can stick your hand through, man. It's the end of the world, isn't it? <laughs> Some people. So one of the first things that I think about when you want to level up your project game, your hardscape game, or your overall size of projects is you're not going to get a chance to do a big project right off the bat. Like this one here, this one's probably a quarter million dollars. Um, you're not going to like starting out, you're going to have to do like a $5,000 project, $10,000 project and slowly climb. This project is a combination of a bunch of smaller projects all in one. So until we can prove that we can do the fives and the tens, we're not going to get a chance for a 20. We're not going to get a chance for a 30. So you got to continually do the best you can everywhere you go, because people that have this kind of money to spend know what they're looking for. They're not going to pick out some contractor that's underqualified. They're going to want to see that you, have done it before multiple times before they invest this money on their property. And the only way you're gonna get there is doing the best on every single one. So just put quality work in all the time. Even sometimes if you have to eat it on a job to put a, a quality product in, do it. You need your bottom rail. You need your bottom rail measure set. That's the point. Is it casual to keep my hood up or? Yeah. Okay. Another key point too, if you're gonna climb the ladder, is you got to be really open-minded. Like I know here at this project, the customer was looking at three or four potential companies. And from what I've heard, um, two of them were off the bat, like just, they, they knocked them out immediately. And then the third, one, the third one we were in contention with, and they wanted to pour like a concrete wall down the side if you were able to see what looks like this, what this project looked like before, there was a timber wall that was leaning. They wanted a foundational wall to be poured, and we kind of just put six by sixes up against it to hold it, and that worked. Um, also, they were looking at the project as a whole, like they didn't really work with the customer too much. Over here, something that we did that I feel helped us gain this job was I told the customer, like, they don't have to have the whole driveway right away. They don't have to put that wall in right away. That wall is terrible looking, but um, it could last two or three more years. Like, you don't have to spend all this money at once. You can kind of section it out. So I worked with the customer a lot, stayed open-minded. Even though there was this overall plan we wanted to use, we didn't have to do it all at one time. And I feel like that's something that, you know, I'm not sure what the conversation with the other guy they're interviewing was, but I feel like that's something that helped us gain this job. I remember this customer telling me specifically, if it's not, you know, X dollar amount on my property, I'm gonna have to figure something else out. And so that's when we came up with this solution. And you'll find that. And for us, this was advantageous at this date and time. This is a, you know, kind of like that next rung. Um, so that's, that's again why, why we didn't do the driveway and didn't do the wall, but we got everything else on a portfolio at the moment. Hmm? <laughs> you get it on, man. 
<laughs> Screw fell right there. You were getting nervous, weren't you? All right. The bolt just came right off. It's got soft hands. Yeah. Can't say I didn't see that happening. Yeah. Still like, remaining open-minded. When you're looking at uh, your designs, don't just like look at it as the concept. If the customer's trying to save money, you could change the product around. You could change the shape. You can make cuts easier. There's a lot of things that you could do to work your way in with a customer to find their specific solution. It doesn't have to be the exact design that you're presenting. You could change it up, get a, you know, get the contract, still put in a quality product and the customer will be happy and you'll still be climbing that ladder. I feel like at this point we've tried a lot of different things. Like we've tried a lot of different product, a lot of different design concepts. I know out there there's designers and companies that are known for their specific look and that's what people seek them out for. Um, I don't think we have a specific look. Like there's been tons of different looks that we've put out there. I feel like that's kind of broadened like our client base come, come in to us for something specific that we've done before. I feel like it's been kind of advantageous for us to have had our hands on and installed a lot of different product so that we can be more of an expert in the field and say, I like this because of that, or I don't like this because of that. We did it here and this is what it turned out like, or you know what the conversation could be. Whereas if you're just installing one thing all the time, I don't think you're gonna gain as much opportunity out there in the market because uh, you're not gonna be able to speak on product like an expert. So is that low enough for you? Yeah. Is that gonna match? So similar to uh, like always doing a good job and installing a good product, you just kind of always have to be nice to everybody you come across and kind of invest in other people without expecting a return. Because at some point, you know, you're gonna need something from them, whether it be knowledge or a hand, something's gonna go south as you're climbing the ladder on a project that you're gonna to have to easily adapt and overcome. One thing that I think Nate is really good on is he never thinks like, what if this goes wrong or what if that goes wrong? Like that could really hold you back. I think he more so thinks like, we're gonna do this. We're gonna figure it out one way or another. And if you're just got a positive outreach to the community and to the people around you, that stuff will feed you and help you grow in turn.